The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our uh, presentation, uh, to our webinar, where we are going to talk about uh, CF Turbo primarily, and then how CF Turbo interacts with ANSYS. So, my name is Mei Tin. Uh, I'm the principal at Ozon Engineering, and I'd like to give a brief uh, overview of who is Ozon Engineering and what do we do. Uh, and uh, we uh, are engineers all day. Uh, we do FEA and CFD and electromagnetics. So that's uh, we are in simulation business finite elements, computation fluid dynamics, and uh, again, uh, elect, uh, simulation of electromagnetic tools. So we are an elite channel partner for ANSYS. Uh, uh, our, uh, we basically primarily sell ANSYS tools. And uh, as of a couple of months ago, we also added uh, CF Turbo tools to our portfolio. And um, so among the software tools, ANSYS, you know, as you may recall, we ANSYS has structures, flutes, electronics, high frequency, low frequency, optics, materials database, and uh, what we call twin builder tools. Um, those are primary tools. On the West Coast, we cover, um, you know, Oregon, um, Nevada, and California. And on the East Coast, uh, we operate under a different name, uh, Mallet Technology, and we have offices in Maryland as well as North Carolina. And uh, all in Michigan, uh, we work under the name CATFAN. And, uh, and ANSYS, as you may know, ANSYS headquarters is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, uh, CF Turbo uh, headquarters. Uh, in the U.S. is in New York City. Uh, as a company in Ozen, as Ozen Engineering, uh, we represent both ANSYS and um, NCF Turbo in these territories. And uh, we, uh, as a company, we get into a lot of semiconductor simulations. Being in Silicon Valley, that kind of where we started, and we get we do a lot of solar industry simulations. We can do mono and multi-objective design optimization with any physics. And we have uh, teams. We have mechanical engineering team. We have uh, electrical engineering team, a uh, team that deals with um, uh, in high frequency, low frequency electromagnetics. And we couple ANSYS in biomedical industry with uh, muscular skeletal models. and um, in consumer products, uh, uh, you know, we get into, of course, autonomous vehicles, uh, where there's a lot of uh, uh, studies right now, uh, projects uh, with respect to anything from crash simulation to antennas with autonomous cars. Uh, so our engineers are involved in that. And our Electrical engineering group uh, in, is involved in high and low frequency electromagnetics, anything that deals with human body and as well as outside the human body um, with respect to antennas. Uh, so antennas is a big part of our uh, business uh, because um, uh, uh, IoT as well as autonomous vehicles, they all require um, antennas. But the main topic of the day is turbo machinery. As a company, we get involved in uh, 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 big and uh, small projects that involve turbo machinery. That's why uh, we have a big interest in CF Turbo and uh, how it uh, aligns, how it uh, talks to ANSYS uh, software products. So. Uh, it's uh, CF Turbo is an outstanding solution for turbo machinery design, simulation and optimization, anything from pumps, blowers, fans, compressors, and turbines. Uh, that's where I see that CF Turbo 
and uh, choosing the design, then uh, whatever the design that we work on, we can bring it into ANSYS tools to do CFD and maybe followed up by fluid structure interaction to do the structural simulations. So we are very excited about the engagement with CF Turbo. And today in our agenda, we have three speakers from CF Turbo. Chelsea Hall uh, joining us from uh, New York City. Uh, uh, she's going to introduce us to CF Turbo. And we have Ralph Peter Miller. Uh, he's going to talk about CF Turbo tools. And we have uh, Sasha, who's joining us all the way from Germany. Uh, he's going to talk about um, CF Turbo and how it is integrated into ANSYS. Um, so those are all topics of interest to us. Just to give you a brief background about Chelsea Hall, uh, who's our first speaker. Uh, she's a digital marketing strategist at CF Turbo. And Chelsea joined CF Turbo in uh, 2019 as a digital marketing strategist. Her careers uh, span both creative work and administration for arts and culture, nonprofits, political campaigns, and now the mechanical engineering industry. We are excited to have her here. And our second speaker is going to be Ralph Peter Miller, and he is the president of CF Turbo. He studied at Dresden University. Uh, fluid Mechanics, Thermodynamics, Turbo Machinery, and he has a master's uh, degree in engineering. And he worked at General Motors for three years. In 1993, he founded CFT Network, which is a CFT consulting company. In 2008, Ralph became co-founder and managing director of CF Turbo uh, in Dresden, Germany. Then. Um, in 2017, um, uh, he is now the president of CF Turbo in New York. So he's also joining us from New York. And um, last but not least, uh, the speaker is Sasha. Uh, he's a CA CAE engineer. Um, uh, he studied mechanical engineering at Dresden University of Technology with specialization in automotive engineering and the scientific focus on the simulation of internal combustion engines. Uh, he is a CAE engineer at CF Turbo headquarters in Dresden, Germany, since 2008. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chelsea. And um, so um, I'm going to make presenters over here and so that she can um, Give us uh, an introduction to CF Turbo. So please. Thank go you, ahead. Yep. All right. Welcome, everyone. We again are CF Turbo. And CF Turbo has been on the market since 2008. We have two offices, as was mentioned. We're headquartered in Dresden, Germany, and also here in Brooklyn, New York. We have three business fields. First, we have turbo machinery design software, which features automated workflows and custom development. Next, we offer engineering services, such as CFD or FEA simulation, digital design space exploration, as well as optimization. And finally, we offer product development, which includes rapid prototype development and mechanical design and testing. So besides our own offices, we have a network of distributors around the globe, as you can see. We are the yellow dot there on the East Coast in the US, and we're really happy to be partnering now uh, with Ozen in Silicon Valley. So we also serve various different industries, as you can see from energy, the oil and gas sector to chemical and process, aerospace and defense, automotive, etc. 
we serve um, customers from large corporations, small and medium businesses, as well as startups. And our software solution is made for experts and beginners. So we want people at um, different levels in turbo machinery design to be able to use our software. And next we have 200, over 200 clients from all over the world that rely on our software and services. You can see customers such as Tesla, Joby, Sundyne, Samsung, LG. Um, we are really proud to serve um, all of these companies. Thank you. I'll turn it over to you, Ralph. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Maitin, first, and thank you, Chelsea, uh, for the introduction. Uh, so I will continue now with CF Turbo itself is the technical part. And first, I have some words uh, to the CF Turbo design methodology. And the input is pretty simple. Uh, you have to put in uh, your duty point or design point. In most cases, is this the best efficiency point of the machine, which is characterized by volume flow rate or mass flow rate, head or total pressure difference, a rotational speed, and the inlet boundary conditions. And then with these five, six, seven numbers, um, you start CF Turbo and behind of our software, there are two, uh, two uh, basic things. One, on the one hand, there are fundamental physical equations like the Bernoulli or the Euler equation or all the conservation equations for mass, momentum, and energy. And on the other hand, uh, we have numerous empirical correlations in it, which gives CF Turbo the ability to come up with very reasonable uh, initial designs. So this is a sort of um, intelligence which helps us to get 3D models. And this is what you, um, what is the outcome? You, you start with this number of, um, of, uh, of values and then you end up with a, with a 3D geometry, which can be exported later then for CAD, rapid prototyping for CFD or, or FEA simulations. And we will show this later in the process uh, during a live demo in a couple of minutes. So here you see some examples uh, which we are created in CF Turbo, blowers and fans of different kinds, um, yeah, spiral cage, automotive cooling fans, uh, axial fans, contra rotating fans, and normal radial industrial fans as well. So this is a large part of our business. Then here the um, the famous compressor and turbine industry. You see on the left side two compressor examples made in CF Turbo, and on the right side an, an axial turbine and a radial inflow turbine. And last but not least, um, we do a lot in pumps and we, we are able to create nearly any kind of pumps from axial over radial and suction pumps, multi-stage bowl diffuser pumps, but also special types like wastewater pumps or inducers. So today we talk about uh, the workflow with, with ENSYS, which is for us an, an outstanding solution um, because ENSYS has for many decades the turbo machinery tools yeah, like, like uh, TurboGrid or ENSYS CFX. And we have written um, smooth interfaces to these software. And the thing is not only that we have interfaces, we can also integrate CF turbos in the ANSYS world. And there are two options. And one option is that we work in a optimization workflow, right? So we combine a parametric design tool, which is CF turbo in this case, uh, with the simulation tools from ANSYS, like ANSYS CFX or ANSYS Mechanical. And this uh, is, uh, let's say, driven or controlled by um, an optimization tool called ANSYS OptiSlang. And so we can make really automated optimization. And, um, and this is a, a very um, robust and, and um, intriguing way to automate turbo machinery. So, and the other way is that we work um, in ANSYS Workbench. So there is a, 
a truly a bidirectional integration of CF Turbo in ANSYS Workbench. So that means that you can go back and forth and all the parameters are maintained, all the changes are maintained. And this is except especially helpful for, for manual, but also for automated design exploration, what, what you could do, for example, with the ANSYS Design Explorer. And this part uh, will show my colleague Sasha later. So I would switch now to the online demo. of CF Turbo and we design as announced in our um, in our um, speech before we, uh, we wanted to create an axial fan today just as an example so you see here this is the GUI of CF Turbo uh, and we choose among all the others we cho choose the fan model and as shown before right we have to define the design point CF Turbo and in this case here, we give the volume flow rate, 3,000 cubic meters per hour, a pressure difference, 500 pascals, and the rotational speed, which is 3,500 in this case. So we, there's a database available for CF Turbo. Um, it's not only for air and water, it's really a large database for any kinds of fluids. But we here stay with an, with an airflow and then the inlet boundary conditions are written below and what you see on the right side is it immediately a, a sort of you get an idea what machine type you could choose and this is in between a mixed flow and an axial machine and for our case here we choose to design an axial fan so we hit okay we, we know we want to build an axial impeller and then we go through step by step uh, through the design steps and one thing is we have to decide do we have a shrouded or unshrouded impeller so in this case it would be an unshrouded one and I have to define the tip clearance so the, the little gap between the, the blade tip and the casing and I put it here to one millimeter and then we have to choose the uh, type of um, of impeller and we have two types here so called standard impeller and and one thing for automotive cooling which are specially thin and uh, thin impellers so the next we have to choose about airfoil and mean line design so especially for these axle fans the airfoil design is 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 recommended and then other options are here which we do not apply today would be multi stage control rotating or even we can work with alternating speeds so this is very specific stuff let's say for the aerospace industry so this was the first step in the main dimension windows now i talked before about the intelligence of cf turbo and this is here behind the empirical functions and for example when you see here to define let's say how big your fan would be you could choose these function which you see here on the left side and the functions also uh, graphical. And, and you see that CF Turbo is not a black box. You really can control what you do all the time. And even these functions can be, what you have here, these functions can be adopted by yourself if you know it better, right? So, and, um, so these are the input values. You have also to make an estimation of the aerodynamic and volumetric efficiency to make the right sizing of the fence and then we get some numbers for the main dimensions and uh, let me think here i want to check this calculate okay anyway so we uh, we use this number basically what we have here 165 and 330 so we can also adjust any of the numbers what we have in our model and on the right side we have um, a lot of graphical uh, information cordia diagram or also um, um, the mean main physical values here on this point of the of the design next design step would be uh, the meridional um, the meridional um, view and we, we can make this also here 
we can adjust the axial length of the of the fan. Now let me think. And we add a let me think, I have to go back here for the main dimensions to check the setup. Yeah. Oh here, this was the error. I have to go to standard. Yeah, I just choose the wrong option before. Yeah. Go to our options, say calculate. And adapt here our numbers. Three hundred. So going back to the to the meridional shape. So we given a certain length, and again I could do this also manually. Add the hub and shroud. Can choose a certain solid design for the hub itself, and then I can come to the blade design. And here we in this uh, window we define the number of blades which can be uh, um, adjusted and a the number of spans spans we can see here so it could be between at least two spans to 15 spans i think here we recommend 10 at least and we choose our design method for the radial equilibrium and we usually say that we bring more work to the outer part in this case and make a profile selection as the next stop you can choose your different profiles but you could also use our own point based profiles so this is okay and we have a a first design of our of our twisted blade and in the final design step for the impeller we could make a sweeping in axial directions, the sweeping of the blade is usually done for um, uh, for acoustic reasons to to minimize um, to minimize noise, and that's why. So there is a certain, let's say, um, drawback, maybe in efficiency, but not much. And you you have the chance here to adjust these sweeping these sweeping models. And in this point, we already can see our our 3D fan with seven blades here, what we choose before and 10 spans. So the second design step would be we add a, a stator, a vein stator, yeah, with blades, and we give them a certain extension. In this case here, so 90 millimeters would be enough axial extension. So this is pretty easy. Again, the same design step, meridional contour design. Yeah, we have the position of the leading and the trailing edge. This can be adjusted manually or graphically. So here we say, okay, Z constant. So we add these, we add again, a hub solid and the shroud solid. And in this data now, we calculate our blade angles, same steps, number of blades. So this, we should be careful here because it's a, it's a matter that we should avoid pressure fluctuations and in this case so this is here supported in this window that we can choose a higher number of blades for example number of spans let's say three would be enough i would say for because we choose a simpler blade shape and we can choose different blade shapes from freeform overruled surfaces radial elements freeform 2d or straight blades and here we choose the freeform 2d blades so we have a certain chance of changing the curvature. So on the other hand, in this window, we have to build in a certain thickness. And I suggest we make here a little profiling, make it thicker on the inlet and smaller on the trailing edge side before we can go to the next step. Again, we see here typical values, blade angles, meridional section. Next step would be the mean line design. So this is the curvature from the leading to the trailing edge. So everything is designed so far in the in the model. And then we can we can see this here. Here we have an inlet angle of about 50. Outlet is 90 degrees. But if you want to say, okay, this might be not enough because we have some slip. So we should go 
back to the blade properties, change this blade angle to let's say 100 degrees, and you immediately see here in the mean line design our stronger curvature here in the for the blades. On the left side in the big window, this is a so-called MT diagram, this is the meridional contour coordinate over the tangential coordinate, and which gives us the possibility to see the true blade angles. And yeah, on the right side you see your blade passage area or for example the static pressure rise in the stator. And we could do many, show many more of these uh, details. Okay, next step would be then the blade thickness for the for the stator blades. And we can use this here, for example, we could use this by a a, um, a linear interpolation, or we could also make freeform freeform blades. So this is really a large variety. And when we have freeforms, again, we could have the possibility also to read in our profiles from a profile manager. So next step would be the rounding of the of the leading and the trailing edges, and this could be done in different possibilities, right, over simple elliptic or bezier shapes. Yeah, here for the leading edge, we keep this elliptic, and the trailing edge, we, let's say, let's do this here on the bezier, slim bezier profile, and say, okay, and in this, and with this, so we have a full, a full axial stage of an, of a fan. And um, now we add just some um, components on the inlet, on the outlet side to prepare the computational model. So the one thing is uh, we add a, an unveined stator behind the vein stator, uh, given a, given a certain length, certain extension, for example, 300 millimeters, roughly, and we say on the outlet, we bring it down to zero. Yeah, I want to build here a, a nice diffuser, which decelerates the flow. What we do here is we split this curve twice to build a certain nice shaped diffuser. Yeah, sometimes here it's also motor integrated or so, and we can change these curves. What we see here is um, yeah, the cross-section area, you see how the, the area is growing, which is good for the static pressure gain. And one more step. So we see this component right here. And finally, we just add a, a piece of pipe, which is which is for numerical reasons, yeah, let's say 1,000 millimeter, that we don't have an influence from the um, components, uh, from the boundary conditions to the components itself. Yeah. So and so, what we have on the on the outlet side, we also put in a nozzle on the inlet side to have a appropriate inflow conditions to our impeller. And this would be done here. Yeah, we add a stator, given them a certain extension, right, and define the inlet from zero, and we make this a bit nozzle type, a bit larger, and finish it. And again, we modify our shape and we add here an inlet curve just to make a, a little recess and um, make a bezier out of this and on the other side we built in a hub nose we could also do this with a, with a bezier curve uh, defining the the angle, the transitional angle. So, and this is a basically our model 
which is ready for simulation and export. And what we do to check the geometry, for example, what we could do is, is a so-called model finishing of the bladed components. And I show this here for the, for the impeller. Then what, what is done here, it's really, he builds a, he builds a, a solid, not only, it's not only surface, he builds a solid, a solid model. And the same we will do here for the, for the range data. And this is when this works, so then we have no, we will have no export issues. So we check these models, so, and then we see the, so we see our 3D, our 3D model here on the screen. So, and two things which are pretty helpful. So we can, um, first of all, we could um, change colors and um, also change transparency, for example, from, from certain components. And the other thing is we can also rename components, which is helpful later when we, um, when we use it this in ANSYS because all the names and all the structure of the model will be will be used in in ANSYS and uh, we have this named selection op option which is really helpful for parametric for parametric modeling so i use here these typical names so this is a diffuser and an outlet extension. So this is what we have now ready for export. Yeah, when you see here, you see all the, the export formats, which CF Turbo is capable. So, and how we go in, or how we work then in ANSYS Workbench. So this is then uh, Sasha's part, and uh, I would um, I would transfer, uh, or I would ask Matin, please, uh, that you make Sasha as the presenter now. From my part, um, um, I'm finished. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Ralph. So welcome everybody to, to today's session. Um, in this session, I will be demonstrating the integration of CF Turbo into ANSYS CFD workflows by making use of the CF Turbo Workbench extension. Um, as Ralph already mentioned, the CF Turbo Workbench extension enables the integration of CF Turbo into ANSYS workflows. It allows bi-directional parameter updates between CF Turbo and ANSYS Workbench. And a big benefit is that we automatically create named selections of characteristic turbo machinery patches for space claim exports. And therefore it improves your data processing in ANSYS meshing, CFX pre and CFD post. And overall you decrease the time you spend on the pre and post processing and you fortify the robustness of your workflows. And of course it enables you to perform automatic turbo machinery optimization using either standard tools like the ANSYS Design Explorer or even external software like Dinaro's OptiSlang. Okay, during the installation of CF Turbo, uh, the user has the option to automatically install the CF Turbo Workbench extension for all users of the workstation. After the installation itself, a new CF Turbo entry will be created inside of the toolbox of ANSYS Workbench and we just start with an empty Workbench project and we create a new CF Turbo system by performing a drag and drop operation into the project schematic. Uh, we double click the setup cell to open CF Turbo from inside ANSYS Workbench and once CF Turbo has been loaded we have the option to either create a new design or load an existing project so for this session, we are going to use the turbo machinery design that 
Ralph created in the previous session. session. And by default, CF Turbo displays the Meridian view of your Turbo machinery components. And our current design consists of an inlet pipe, an actual impeller, a vein stator with an adjacent diffuser, and an artificial outlet extension. As Ralph already mentioned, it's uh, in order to move our boundary conditions a little bit away from our design. Um, in CFTOVA, you can also display and animate a three-dimensional representation of your project design state. And on the left-hand side, you have to access to, to all the components uh, in the model tree, and you configure, can configure their display settings individually. CFTOVA also offers to export your visible model data to a 3D PDF document, allowing you to distribute and archive your 3D model easily. Uh, all of our turbo machinery components are fully defined by geometry parameters. So in the next step, we are going to configure our parameters and transfer them into the parameter set inside of ANSYS Workbench. So I'm just going to open the ANSYS Workbench menu. And as you can see, the available parameters of the project are displayed in a tree structure according to their components and the design steps. And each parameter can be activated or deactivated uh, individually. So for today's example, let me just quickly collapse the, the tree view. For today's example, uh, I want to activate, for example, the plate tip clearance of our actual impeller. Maybe I want also to activate the parameters for the impeller main dimensions, as well as the number of plates, which can be found in the plate properties module. And I could also activate parameters for our veins stator. And in this case, I could choose also the number of plates, but for example, also the plate angle at the trailing edge. In the next step, we are going to configure our exports for our turbo machinery components. Therefore, I'm going to switch to the export actions tab. And for ANSYS Workbench, CF Turbo currently offers two export interfaces. The first one is the Space Climb export interface, which relies on a workflow using the ANSYS meshing tool. The second one is the Turbo Grid export interface. So in this session, we are going to export our impeller uh, using the TurboCrit export interface. And we are go also going to export our vein stator component uh, to a TurboCrit system. And I'm just going to click. That. And for the rest of our components, uh, I'm going to use the space game export interface. So this would be the pipe in component, the diffuser, and the outlet extension. And on the left hand side, you see a summary of the export actions we have currently defined. Okay, um, after we have successfully set up our export configuration, we will continue our workflow inside of ANSYS Workbench. So we close all of our windows, we exit CF Turbo and we confirm the safe dialog. And we are back at our project schematic inside of ANSYS Workbench. As you can see, additional cells have been added to the CF Turbo system. In detail, we have cells that contain the Turbo Grid exports, and we have cells that contain the Space Claim exports. Since we have activated parameters inside of CF Turbo, a parameter set has been added to the project schematic. Inside the, inside the parameter set, uh, you will find the parameters that you have activated in CF Turbo. You can also change the parameter units uh, to a format which is, you feel more comfortable with. And as Ralph already mentioned, CF, CF Turbo allows bi-directional parameter updates, which means that parameter changes inside of CF Turbo are reflected inside the parameter set of ANSYS Workbench. 
and also any modification to the parameters inside the parameter set are directly applied to your CF Turbo design. So in the next step, we are going to link our exports uh, of our Turbo machinery design to the corresponding systems inside of ANSYS Workbench. This can be done by selecting the export cell, performing a right click and choosing transfer data to new. And we are going to link TurboCrit exports to TurboCrit systems. And we are going to link space claim exports to and smashing systems. All components are going to be meshed individually. And after we have set up this workflow, uh, we are going to merge all the outputs from the meshing systems to an empty CFX system. Okay, so for now no exports or computational mesh have been created. So in the next step, I would need to update my CF Turbo system in order to create my export data. And since, um, yeah, for time reasons, uh, since the export as well as the meshing process of my components is time consuming and we, we don't have that much time on, on the hand today, uh, I'm going to switch to an already prepared workbench project using the same geometry. As you can see, exports already have been created. Uh, I already have meshed the geometry. And let's take a look, closer look at the uh, setup in CFX Pre by opening CFX. And as I mentioned, uh, named, named selections uh, are created automatically for your turbo machinery components and you can use them inside of ANSYS meshing, CFX pre as well as CFD post to apply your settings in a comfortable and more robust way. And so for example in CFX pre I have used them to set up my fluid domains. So normally you would need to deal with these artificial IDs if you haven't uh, set up name selections manually. Like I said, CF Turbo creates them automatically and you have access to them in this way. And uh, you can also use the name selections for uh, to apply your boundary conditions. So these examples are maybe a little bit uh, trivial. So uh, like I said, normally you would have to deal with these artificial IDs, but since our name selections are created automatically, you can just select uh, them from this, this list. Okay. Um, yeah, in this, as you can see in the model, uh, I have modeled all components as a 360 degree model, except, except of the plate passages, which have been modeled inside of TurboCrit. And of course, inside of CFX Pre, you have the option to uh, to quickly uh, modify your setup and make a 360 degree model from your plate passages. So this can be done really easily by choosing the transform mesh option. Uh, we want to choose the option full circle full for rotation. And of course we want to have multiple copies. So in this case, I think the uh, actual impeller was consisting of seven plates, so we need six additional copies and we can apply this change. And of course we could perform the same operation for our vein stator, also a full circle, but I think we need to have eight additional copies since our vein stator was modeled with nine plates. All right, and now you would just need to perform some small small changes to your setup uh, in order to 
uh, apply for the the changes we we already have made. Um, I uh, won't do this now, so I'm going to switch to uh, the results we have um, achieved with this design. So let me quickly open CFD post. And as you can see, I have already plotted uh, the pressure distribution on the surfaces uh, of our uh, turbo machinery design. You can, maybe if we add streamlines, you can make it a little bit more clear. And yeah, if we take a look at expressions I have previously design, uh, defined inside of CFX Pre. So if we take a closer look at the hydraulic efficiency, uh, not um, at the aerodynamic efficiency of the impeller. Uh, you can see we achieve a efficiency of around uh, 90%. If we take a closer look at the efficiency of the complete stage, we still achieve an efficiency of 80%. But of course, we need to meet uh, our, uh, our specified operation point. So if we take a closer look at the total pressure difference of the stage, you can see we only achieve roughly 450 Pascal instead of the 500 Pascal we uh, put in as an uh, operation point condition uh, at the beginning. So we, we are short of um, 50 Pascal. So this is the first, so this is the first design iteration and the design is a pretty good start, but we may need more iterations to meet op our operation point or to increase our efficiency. And in this case, we would need to specify uh, new geometry iterations by making adjustments to our parameters. So this can be done by going back into the project schematic. And I will uh, show you how to easily create new design variations of your total machine. Okay, therefore I'm going to open the parameter set again. Inside the table on the left hand side you can see the parameter values of your current design. On the right hand side you can see the parameter values. Let me quickly move this a little bit to the side. So on the right hand side you can see the parameter values of uh, all your designs as well as the corresponding values of your output parameters. So in this case, you can see, as I said, we achieved an overall efficiency of 80%, uh, but we were short of our total pressure difference. We only achieved roughly 450 Pascal. So what I have done is I have created a new design by uh, just entering uh, new values for my uh, geometry parameters uh, in the empty row below. And in this case, I have increased the number of plates uh, for my impeller from seven to nine. And I also needed to increase the number of plates uh, for my stator uh, to avoid uh, that the number of plates are equal, uh, which would be bad for, uh, for noise reasons and would, <coughs> sorry, would induce uh, pressure fluctuations. Therefore, I have increased it to 11. And then I just updated this design point. And if we take a closer look at our output parameters, you can see we lost one uh, point in efficiency. So instead of 80%, we have an overall aerodynamic efficiency of uh, 79%. But we achieved our operation point, uh, which was 500 Pascal. So we have 505. And yeah, so we uh, we don't need to take a closer look at the pressure difference over the impeller, but we can see uh, the values haven't changed by much. So we still have the same efficiency for uh, yeah, for our impeller. So this would be one option to perform some sort of manual optimization by just entering new parameter values by hand. And at last, I want to show you how you could perform 
uh, an automatic optimization. So for example, ANSYS offers uh, the design exploration, exploration suit and we could choose, for example, a response surface optimization and just perform a drag and drop to the parameter set. And then you would need to, um, yeah, define your conditions for your design of experiments. You would create a response surface and you could run an optimization on this uh, meta model that is going to be created. But this is some sort of more advanced topic and I think we don't have much time today to dive deeper into this. So I think, yeah, we are open to questions, questions and yeah, thank you so far for for taking part into the session. Yeah. Thank you, Sasha. Yeah, thank you, Sasha. That was great. Uh, <clears throat> nice way to show Workbench and CF Turbo and how they uh, connect with each other, which seems to be seamless. And uh, and I, I'll ask the first question. Uh, what we are looking at here is, how, how, what do you think, how many engineering uh, hours did you spend uh, to do what you showed us here? So normally, uh, so of course, uh, tasks take different times. So um, for example, Ralph showed you how to de design your turbo machinery components, I think in roughly 15 minutes. Yep. So let's take this as a basis. Um, so 15 minutes for your turbo machinery design or your initial design. And the whole setup uh, until I start the simulation, uh, for me, it normally takes something between 45 and 60 minutes, depending mm -hmm. on how time consuming the meshing process is. Mm -hmm. So okay. overall, I, I would say after 60 to 80 minutes, uh, I'm able to uh, create a turbo machinery design from scratch and start the simulation. And yeah. then after after I start the simulation, it's just the computing power that defines your yeah the duration of your whole process. Okay, yeah, I mean that's a huge time savings, which uh, is the way to justify the use of CF Turbo and ANSYS tools. Uh, in uh, engineering design, that's uh, that's an easy way to bring to managers' uh, attention that these tools really help accelerate product design. In this case, uh, the impeller design here. So thank you, Sasha. That was great. Um, so I'm going to open it up for further questions um, uh, from the attendees. Uh, please, uh, you can type your questions in the uh, questions box, or I'm going to unmute everyone. Uh, feel free uh, to ask a question. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, we have one question, how the fluid domain is created? So, well, I can answer that. So we can go back to, to CF Turbo. The fluid domain is created inside of CF Turbo. And what we are going to, to export from CF Turbo is the fluid domain itself. And it's, I can quickly show it to you. So I'm going to switch to the 3D model. And instead of recent state, I'm going to select fluid domain solids. And maybe I need to run the model finishing. So I need to activate the solid trimming because the solid trimming wasn't activated because we don't need it for <coughs> turbo crit exports, but that's no problem. It just takes a couple of seconds. All right, so yeah, that's that's a little bit, um, yeah, how do I say it? The, uh, this is the fluid domain that is going to be meshed, except of course for the plate passages we, because we use TurboCrit and TurboCrit does not um, 
operate with fluid domains, it's more some sort of a curve based format. Uh, but of course I could um, uh, activate clipping and maybe would, we would see how it looks inside. Um, yeah, so these are the fluid domains. So what's currently uh, you see would be the, yeah, the volume where the fluid, uh, the, the fluid uh, is transported through and these are exported as in the step file format. We apply some script logic to, um, yeah, to, to modify the step files or to, to convert them into a space game file documents and apply the name selections. And then the input into the ANSYS meshing system is a, uh, it's a space claim file format. Okay. Great. Perfect. Thanks. And the next question, can CF Turbo work with ANSYS Fluent? So on a, on a theoretical way, yes, uh, we, uh, but we use uh, for our turbo machinery simulations, we use CFX uh, mostly. Uh, we have talked to customers and uh, from as far as I know, there's, I'm, I'm not sure about the limitations, but it's possible in a theoretical way. So uh, not need... Sasha, Sasha, yeah. can I add? Yeah, it's not only theoretical, it is possible. We have clients which working with Fluent yeah, from the automotive industry, especially I know customers which building uh, automotive coolant pumps, for example, and they use Fluent. So that means the, the, the answer is a clear yes. In the end, uh, I think a user has some preferences. So what we learned is um, that CFX is a bit more robust when it comes to compressible flow, especially, right? And but uh, to answer the question, yes, CF Turbo works with Fluent because then it, in the end, it's only, I think, in in ANSYS Workbench, what solver you choose, and that's it, right? Is it correct? Yeah. So so the the main benefit is that we export Fluent domains with name selections, and I think uh, the way we connect uh, the systems inside of ANSYS Workbench. So let me quickly exit this. Sorry. So the way we connect this, these systems, if there's a CFX system or a Fluent system at the end, it does not matter by much because what outputs uh, comes from the CF Global system is already a Fluent domain with some sort of intelligence in form of the name selections for our characteristic phases like hub, shroud, plate side, leading edge, trading edge, inflow, outflow. So, okay. yeah, I think it does not make any difference. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, next question, uh, CF Turbo, uh, can it provide any performance data before we run CFX or Fluent? Yeah, I take this. The thing is, we have a a certain empirical um, performance map estimation in it, but we, we would really say if you know we want to make design decisions, and and that's why we clearly follow the the strategy that we should make 3D CFD, and we should automate, and we should um, make it uh, quicker and quicker. And I think uh, because, you know, you make design changes based on empirical models and this is really not, um, it's a bit away from the truth and that's why. So the answer is yes, it's possible, but we recommend to do CFD. Right. Right. Okay. Thanks. Um, how does CF Turbo handle small features in geometry? This depends. Small features is from TF Turbo, not a problem in the sense. So it's it, it's in a way it's a CAD system, you know. The the question is what type of features are needed. So we have limitations in in let's say in building some features, right? But the question is small is not an issue. The question is really what should be what should be built but when we talk about a small tip clearance this is not a problem at all right and um depends a bit the question should be or the 
the person who asked should elaborate a bit more what type of small structures he means. Okay. Um, yeah, if um, if you can please um, uh, type it in the questions box. Um, the person who asked the question about handling small features that would be great. Uh, I'll jump over to the uh, the next question. Uh, and sorry, these questions are coming at random, but uh, I think this is related to the previous question. CF Turbo does not have any empirical relation for very initial uh, stages of design. Is that correct? And what what we have empirical correlations to make our designs. So this all our designs are based on empirical correlations. Okay. So and and so that means, or as I as I demonstrated in my presentation, so we have empirical data to create geometries, right? The sizing and the blading and all this thing. What we don't recommend is loss model based um, uh, performance map estimation. Also, this is maybe this. I don't know what the question means, but I think. Uh, so empirical data, yes, for creating the geometry. Um, however, for um, making performance data or getting performance data, we should run 3D CFD. Yep, and that's why the parametric relationship comes in very handy, so that that's we can do that design space. OK, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Next question, can you do heat transfer with your modeling CFX? And that I can answer. The answer is yes. We can do mm -hmm. a conjugate heat transfer simulation in CFX. Uh, and we need to add the solids, of course, in this case. Um, is there something else you'd like to add, um, Sasha? Yeah, or, you know? yeah I would add we can do solids. We can add solids to a certain uh, extent on our side, especially from the impeller and stator side. So what we don't have yet is solids for the casing. You know, for imagine a volute casing, so we don't have the solids over there. So this must be added then in ANSYS at the moment, but um, uh, we work on this so that a, a user can one day also have full solids. That's clear. Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, next question, for a long sprinkle design, uh, can the pump design be imported back and forth between a CAD system as well and then move to ANSYS? Yes. So the thing is, the way is today the following. So we import a, let's say, a CAD file, a step or parasolid file, for example, to, uh, to CF Turbo, or also it could be also SDL data, so we can read it in. And then we rebuild the model. So this is a bit manual work, but we can rebuild it, right? And then bring these rebuilt model to ANSYS as we have seen it here today. It's a possibility. And we are in a process and make this more and more, let's say, user-friendly and comfortable. But in general, it's already possible, yes. Okay, thank you. Next question, will you recommend uh, this is probably for Ralph. Um, will you recommend a Turbo Machinery Design Handbook as a reference? The, the Turbo Machinery Handbook? Design On, Handbook. Oh, pff, I'm not familiar with this, I must admit. So maybe this answers the question. <laughs> the thing uh, is, so our, our data, what we use is from, let's say, from different well-known professors right in the pump side for example it's gulish or stepanov or lobanov right compressor side is professor casey or lütke um Kamsky. and so so we are using all these um all these let's say well-known data from which are around but also some research papers and uh, so uh, the turbo mach machinery design handbook so i I would be interested to to see this. Yeah. Okay, or just buy uh, CF Turbo from us, then that will be um, okay. Thanks. Um, uh, all right. Uh, how is meshing affected by small features in geometry? Uh, that I'll I'll take that uh, if you like. Uh, 
or mm -hmm. Sasha, would you like to respond? No, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for your answer and then I okay. I'll feel free to so, comment. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, what, what we do is in general, when we do the ECIPO projects, uh, you know, we make sure that we have a what we call quote unquote mesh independent uh, study. So that mesh independent study means uh, that, you know, the grid that we build into the CFD models uh, after we refine it to refine it and refine it, the results do not change anymore. That's what we call a mesh independent uh, study. So um, uh, now if you have very small features, very tiny features, again, um, we can take that into account. Uh, uh, the only challenge is in the vicinity of those small features, uh, we are going to put uh, a lot of cells, a lot of elements uh, in the grid. So um, it's going to increase, of course, the computation time, but that's not a problem these days. We have access to cloud computing or, and or other fast computers. So depending on what you would like to get out of the study, yeah, the answer is yes, we can take into account a lot of small features uh, and, uh, and really um, uh, come up with a, a simulation that will look into the flow field around those small features. Is there anything you would like to add, uh, Sasha? No, that's 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 all. I think that was a very good explanation. So mm -hmm. I I have to admit there's there, there are no problems with uh, small features. It all depends on the on the meshing tools. So small features with TurboGrid are not a problem, and small features inside of Ansys meshing just depends on mainly on your mesh settings and how far you are willing to refine or how far you need to refine in order to achieve a mesh independent um, result. Okay. And uh, last question. Um, thanks. Uh, so can CF Turbo models merge with additional CAD to build an assembly level model? The thing is, is it the same what I said before? Um, so we cannot merge it in CF Turbo. So the thing is, if this existing CAD is, so is let's say, Turbo Machinery components we can build in CF Turbo, then we could rebuild the whole thing. But I assume the question goes in the direction if someone has, let's say, a, a, an existing casing, for example, right? And he wants to merge this casing with the CF Turbo file. So then this has to be done in ANSYS Workbench then, right? Not in CF Turbo. Mm -hmm. These okay. merger then. Well, well, I would like to, to add, it's it's possible in a way when you just want to to add adjacent components. For So for example, you have some sort of uh, inflow geometry to your to your pump or to your fan, which is fixed because they, these are uh, neighboring components. So in this case, it would be prop, uh, possible to um, integrate them into the workflow, just for example, by creating a geometry system, lo loading in your, or importing your geometry and then meshing it and transferring it into CFX. What's not possible is to some sort of, um, yeah, create uh, CAD workflows inside of CF Turbo when you start to to trim away and to yeah to unify or to to split uh, with uh, geometries of CF Turbo. That's not possible. But for simple uh, adding them to neighboring components, that's that's no problem. Okay, great. Okay, well, thanks everyone. We did go over time, but thanks for your patience and. Thanks to our speakers, uh, Chelsea, Ralph, and Sasha. That was a great presentation. And uh, uh, for those of you who may be interested uh, in further in the software, if you'd like to see a demo, uh, if you'd like training, consulting, please contact us. Uh, these are our numbers. Um, and uh, of course, if you are interested in CF Torbo software and ANSYS, you know, please contact us. Um, uh, so we started out this really exciting relationship with CF Turbo 
and uh, uh, and we we do have uh, a good marketplace here, and so we would like to uh, we will plan on doing further webinars, and uh, so yeah, please keep in touch and please contact us if you'd like to if you have any further questions that have not been answered here. So thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your day, uh, and uh, if we don't talk to you, uh, have a great holiday season in the rest of uh, December. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Maiden. All right. Thank, thank you. Have you. a good day. Bye. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Goodbye. So. All right. Bye. -bye.